We're here at the last round of the 2009 FIA World Rally Championship. It's Rally GB, and it's all set to be a thrilling battle between Ford's Mick O'Hervinen and Citroen Sebastian Loeb for the Drivers' Championship. Henning, we're here at the final round of the season, Rally GB. What are you hoping to do here? I hope to beat my brother with one point. <laughs> always a competition between you and Petter, isn't it? Sometimes forget the other drivers, it's you and Petter. Yeah, no, it's me and Petter. It's, uh, and uh, that will be quite fun for everyone. It is going to be a fantastic fight out there this weekend, though so many drivers want to be on the top step of the podium. Could you possibly take a win here? We never know, but I, I, I will try as hard as I can on this uh, rally, but uh, it's going to be difficult. I, I will hope the weather will stay like it is now, then it will be more fair because if it's raining a lot, you know, if you are first on the road, it's so so much better for uh, to be in the front than uh, the other way. Now, of course, we had snow, we had ice last year, didn't we? So it's going to be a very different rally GB from what we saw last year. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it, it was a very tough rally last year, but this year I think it will be a very very nice rally because the rally is. is very nice with the with the roads and the, and the organization and everything is good. Now, of course, you're going to be concentrating on your own rally, but the championship battle will be decided here in Wales. How much are you going to be watching what Miko and Sebastian do? Yeah, I will watch it, but I keep my finger crossed for Miko, and I think he will win. Wales Rally GB, Matthew, home really for you, I guess. You looking forward to this one? I am, yeah. I mean. Um it's good to come back and do a rally in the UK. I mean, you spend the whole year competing outside the country, so it's good to come back and see lots of Union Jacks in the stages and stuff like that. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. Not great with the weather, though. We have had a bit of rain so far, haven't we? and a bit of rain forecast for the weekend. How difficult is it going to make it out there if it does rain? It can't be any more difficult than last year. And the good thing is we haven't seen any snow and ice or anything like that. So, yeah, that's, that's one benefit. But um, I think, you know, it's always going to be wet here in Wales at the end. Day. so it's always going to rain at some point but at the minute the stages look really good and just hope it doesn't rain too heavy because um, then it's you know, obviously does make it difficult but yeah I mean at the minute everything looks good and just can't wait to get going really. and of course you've got those classic stages haven't we on the opening day up in mid Wales they're great really good I mean they're in brilliant condition I mean I don't think they've been sort of used or touched for, for a long time they just look so 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 quick but so smooth as well so I think you're going to have to be on it right from the word go because I mean, that first stage is, is obviously one of the longest of the rally um, and there'll be uh, a fair old pace at the front I would think so yeah if we can be on it right from the start then it'll be, it'll be good. So I take it it's flat out all the way then from you this weekend by the sounds of it? We have to try I mean we want to we want to aim to get in the top five um, you know and I think it's, it's obviously going to be more difficult to do than, than you think because you know Petter wants to try and win the rally, Danny Sordo and, and Yari are Obviously, the reins are off to go flat out for them. And then you've got the other two as well that are going to be going mental. So I think there's a potential for a, a fair old pace at the front. So if we can just um, be in amongst it and fighting in, in, that, in that group and in the top five, then I'll be, be happy with it. And how much are you going to be keeping an eye on what the championship contenders are doing? Very much so. Um, I think um, in, everybody here is just desperate for Miko to do it. And I think, you know, if there's one rally, where you would, you know, you'd put him as, as a favourite apart from Finland. You know, it's GB or where he feels comfortable is, is GB. I mean, he's probably done it the most most times of any other rally. So, I think um, I think he's probably in the best best preparation that he, that he could do really. Good luck for yourself this weekend. Thank you. It's Thursday morning and the shakedown is underway in Morgan Park in preparation for this year's Rally GB. There's plenty of familiar faces, not all from the rallying world. Alan Shearer is here and he's been strapped into the co-driver's seat to take a ride with Ford's rally star, Yari Madi Latvala. For the Stobart team, the shakedown has went really well and all according to plan. Matthew Wilson completed three runs and Henning Solberg six to finalise the setup of the rally cars and ensure that everything's ready and they're happy to start the rally. Particular attention has been paid to Matthew in this rally. He's back on home soil and the 22 year old is feeling very confident. Partnered by Scott Martin again, Matthew announced at the press conference on Thursday afternoon that he's looking forward to the rally and hoping for a top five position. Things didn't go exactly to plan this morning. Matthew's been struggling with traction on the slow corners and the slippy conditions and is complaining of the inside wheels spinning on the slow corners. Meanwhile, Henning Solberg has had a misfire with his engine all day 
with only a 15 minute service in the middle of the day, the team have been unable to find the cause of the problem, but they're hoping to resolve it tonight in service. Henning, it's been a tough day for you today. What's, what, what's gone wrong? No, we had some problem with the um, with misfiring on the engine on the first stage, so, uh, and uh, we tried to fix it on the, on the, um, on the um, service but uh, it was not possible to do it there. We have to wait for tonight on the main service to, to fix it. So now it's fixed. Okay. Was it happening on all of the stages or just some of the time? Yeah, it, it's, it was coming and going, coming and going. So uh, that was how it is, but it was very bad on the first stage. Okay. And whenever it wasn't there, did the car feel good? What was the general feeling on the stages? Yeah, the car is, is feeling very good. So uh, I think we have a good chance tomorrow. Okay, what's the aim for tomorrow then? Are you, are you going to try and catch Sebastian Ogier? Yeah, that's my plan. So I just hope the car uh, will be okay and then I go flat out tomorrow and see where we can end. Matthew, the end of day one, and it's not been the best of starts for you. Yeah. No, we've struggled a little bit. Um, we've had some problems with the, we think it's the front diff, um, getting a bit of slip through the front wheels and basically in all the slow corners it's, it's uh, not really uh, given us the full traction that we need to get out of the corner so um, struggling a little bit but hopefully the guys are going to sort it tonight and then we'll we'll have a better day tomorrow. Okay. Does it make it difficult when the dip's not working in the slippery conditions then? Yeah definitely I mean it, it seems to be that when you when you're coming around like a hairpin on a slow corner the inside wheel's spinning and uh, we're just not getting any drive from that wheel and basically it, it then pushes the car out to the, the edge of the road so we've been struggling with that and yeah, it's just been not a great day for, for feeling really. Hopefully, once we get that sorted, we'll have a better flow and a better rhythm tomorrow. We just had a remote service today, which is only 15 minutes, so I take it there was nothing really the mechanics could do then? No, they had a look through the data and basically they had a rough idea of maybe what was happening, but you've got 15 minutes and obviously you don't carry a spare diff in the car, so you know we we're never going to be able to do anything then. Um, so it was just a case of putting up with it for the afternoon and, and changing it tonight. So you're confident that they're going to have it fixed tonight. What are the stages like tomorrow? Will you, will you be able to have a bit of a push and maybe try and climb up the leaderboard some more? Hopefully, yeah. I mean, stages that we know know better tomorrow. Um, you know, we obviously we were meant to do them stages last year, but the the snowy conditions sort of meant we only did well a lot less than half. So most of them were quite new. Um, so tomorrow, we, you know, we've done these for the last three or four years. We've got a better better feeling with them. So hopefully we can uh, we can push push more tomorrow. Okay, I was stood in the service area and there's a painting of your car here. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Yeah, this is it here, and um, basically the guy paints it using remote control cars, and um, it's quite impressive. But it's going to be auctioned off um, for the Richard Burns Foundation, and uh, hopefully make some money for a, a good cause. Despite these problems, both drivers are doing well. Henning's in sixth position, and Matthew's in seventh and they're both on course to secure a good haul of manufacturer points. Day two is the longest day with nearly 140 kilometers of action, so make sure you check back on the Stubart Motorsport website for regular updates.